If a man would have a sexual urge for another man, do you think he would stop there? Absolutely not. He would also go after children too. So they are predators. What? Stop. Okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. And you think about it, if a, if a man would sexually touch another man, he would do it with anything, okay? That's just so gross and disgusting that he would literally do it with anything. He'd do it with an animal, anything. A child, they're dangerous. Oh. I know! You know, I know, I got it. I got the concept. We're talking about the lowest of lows, the craziest of crazies, the LGBT community. <laughs> If there's so many different genders, why is it that you can only buy shirts today in a male or female size? Because there is only male and female. There's only male chromosomes, female chromosomes, okay? You can't just cut off one organ and say, well, oh, I'm a female now, or I'm a male now. That's not how it works. There's female chromosomes, male chromosomes. You'd have to get a chromosome change, right? You would die. Have you ever encountered someone whose mere presence is enough to drive you to frightening levels of inconsolable rage? Someone that scrapes against the very fiber of your being like a rusty cheese grater, flaying your innermost self while metaphorical ghost pepper extract is poured over your eyeballs and shoved up your ass in an unending enema of Goliath proportions? That's Maddie Powellette for me. You may know her as Matt Powell. Hey guys, this is Matt Powell. She and I have a sort of history, and I've already done a video on why I lampoon and misgender this reprehensible prick. I won't reiterate why here. Suffice it to say, Maddie is a deranged, hateful, abusive, and borderline murderous idiot who lies regularly and misrepresents those who criticize her. Lord, I pray you'd strike those pedophiles dead, every single one of these drag queens dead, Lord. I pray that you would wipe them out, and that you would eradicate them through your power. And Lord, we know that you will someday, if not now. You're, you're a skinny little runt baby that can't think for himself, and you come here, you constantly leech off me, then you go complain to other people, Oh, Matt won't, Matt's taking advantage of me. Dude, you <laughs> will go to hell! I am not joking! Look at me! And you know how hateful it is? to adopt children as a homosexual couple when they can't have a normal mom and dad. They have to have dad and dad. You know how stupid that sounds? They have to have mom and mom. They can never know what it's like to truly have a mom and a dad, okay? The only reason they adopt children is probably to molest them, according to statistics. Is that what you're advocating for? Is that our government should stone gays to death? I, 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 I don't, by whatever means, they execute people. And obviously I believe in humane, you know, putting to death. Matt, stop. Look at me. Stop. You look at me right now. Stop. That came here has nothing to do with this. I came here. We are going to talk you about this. You're smile. You are insane. You think I am yelling too hard? You have lost no. your mind. And he said, "Be fruitful and multiply." If you're homosexual, you can't multiply. The only way you can multiply is by molesting children and creating, like zombies, creating more child molesters. All the while, she maintains a specially curated bubble of followers who are only exposed to information that makes her look competent. My videos, the real Matt Powell, and. Powell's profoundly preposterous postulation, both linked below, go over proof of these serious accusations in detail. Maddie also lives at the compound of convicted domestic abuser and tax fraud, Kent Hovind. She works with Hovind and has continued to support him and his ministry, despite his crimes being proven in courts of law. Given that Maddie is this kind of person, why do I even bring her up? Well, it turns out that June was Pride Month. Little Maddie released some of what I suspect is her pent-up, self-hating gay energy. <laughs> By making a 45-minute hate rant against the LGBTQ community. I feel that ignoring Kent, Maddie, and their ilk is in general the best policy, because paying them heed only keeps them going. 
but there are specific claims in this video, some of which are supposedly backed by data, that I felt warranted responses. Other claims here are just damn stupid. Same YouTuber puts out videos against Dr. Hoven, puts out videos against other pastors, says that what they're saying is wrong. You know what? God said, fine, I'll make you go crazy. It's proof right there. Either way, I did not want to let this horrific sermon stand unchallenged. I'm not going to go over Maddie's whole seminar, as she calls it, nor am I going to link to it. Instead, I'm going to go over the specific major claims in it while ignoring the Bible preaching. Given this little fussock's previous conduct, it's entirely possible she comes after me or misrepresents me as a groomer, pedophile, or something similar in response to this video. It's entirely possible. If she does, there's a 99% chance I'm going to get very vexed and then simply move on with my life. I decided a long time ago not to get drawn into online wars, especially with gopping insufferable hate mockers like Maddie. So, with all of that said, Let's get started. Claim 1. LGBTQ people are prideful. Like I said earlier, today and this whole month is a month that is celebrated by the United States of America and it's known as Pride Month. And people are going about in the streets holding up their, their queer pride signs, right, and their flags. But here's the thing, Anderson Cooper recently came out, he said, I, he, he came out as a homosexual, he says, I couldn't be any more happy, comfortable with myself, and proud. Do you know what the definition of pride is? Pride, a feeling that you are more important or better than other people. So what if I got up on the street and I said, I'm better than other people. Do you know what people would do? They'd say, you're a hate monger. That's hateful, that's mean. You know what, when they go around holding up gay pride signs, what they're saying is, I'm better than you. I'm better than your kids. I'm better than your family. Maddie kicks off her sermon by claiming that all gay people think they're better than everyone else. I suppose she's lumping in trans and bisexual people here too. Her earth-shattering evidence for this is a screenshot of the definition of the word pride, and a quote from homosexual man Anderson Cooper that he is happy with and proud of who he is. With this opening claim barely one minute into her sermon, Maddie starts prolapsing the dishonesty she can't seem to contain every time she appears on camera. One of her favorite tactics is to use the fallacy of suppressed evidence. This fallacy occurs when someone willfully ignores information relevant to their case, particularly information that would count against the conclusion they are making. This first claim of hers is a prime example. Maddie only presents a single definition for the word pride. This definition fits the conclusion she wants to draw, i.e. that all homosexual people are conceited and egotistical. However, there are other definitions to the word, and they are more applicable to the gay pride movement. Here are the definitions from the Britannica Dictionary. 1a. A feeling that you respect yourself and deserve to be respected by other people. Self-respect. 1b. A feeling that you are more important or better than other people. 2a. A feeling of happiness that you get when you or someone you know does something good, difficult, etc. 2b. A person or thing that makes you feel proud. 3. A group of lions. So, a feeling that you respect yourself and deserve to be respected by other people. Given queer people have been largely abused by society throughout history, I suspect the pride movement is based on that definition. It took less than five minutes to confirm that is the case. Activists Brenda Howard, Robert A. Martin Jr., and L. Craig Schoenmacher are largely responsible for popularizing the term pride as a way for gay persons to affirm themselves publicly. In a 2015 podcast, Schoenmacher revealed that the term gay power was pitched first, but he proposed the term gay pride instead. He reiterated that the term is still relevant today. Quote, It makes people more self-assertive. That's what really is going to make the change in people's lives. When they assert their rights to marry, they assert their right to be known. They assert their right to employment. 
we certainly hoped it would catch on. Not as a slogan so much as an understanding that people should be proud and not ashamed. End quote. So, no, gay pride is not about conceit or believing you are better than everyone else. It's about standing up to reprehensible bigots like Miss Powlett and saying that you are proud of your identity despite what they say. Claim 2. LGBTQ people are self-admitted monsters. Now, who has ever heard of this coming out of the closet day? I hear about it every single year. October 11th is coming out of the closet day. Do you know what they are admitting when they say they're coming out of a closet? What's a closet? You know, when I was a kid, I used to be afraid of monsters coming out of the closet. When they say, I'm coming out of the closet, you know what they're admitting? That they're coming out of a very dark place. They're literally admitting to you that they are gross people, that they're disgusting, and that their acts that they do are disgusting. When you are homosexual, you're in a very, very, very dark place. Hence why you even say, I'm coming out of the closet, which is a dark place by definition. This is just her opinion. She's literally pulling the, Ew, gays are icky, so they must be bad card. Not only is this pathetic, it's also hilarious, given she says this in the same damn sermon. But I'm sorry, I don't trust my emotions, because my emotions can be flawed. But I do trust fact, and I do trust demonstrated statistics, which have been proven over and over and over again, and the Bible. Those are the things that I trust. I don't trust the way that I feel. I don't trust the way that I feel. I don't trust the way that I feel. She's proposing that her subjective views of something's name determines its attributes. I don't think I need to state how infantile of an argument this is, so it goes in the trash bin without further comment. Claims 3, 4, and 5. Homosexuality increases the risk of child sexual abuse by a factor of 20. 40% of pedophilia that happens is committed by homosexuals. And homosexual people are statistically proven to be pedophiles. There is a lot to unpack in these three claims, and they are intricately connected. As a result, this chunk of information is going to be the largest of this entire video. So, I'm going to let Maddie spill her drivel for a few moments before I address what she has said. Look at this. Homosexuality is indeed a large risk factor for sexual abuse of children. Now check this out. Did you know that 40% of pedophilia that happens, happens from open homosexuals? Wait a minute. Open homosexuals only make up 1-2% to of the entire world population. That means that the LGBT, this group of people, they are 20 times more likely to molest your child than a regular heterosexual, than a regular person. They are pedophiles, statistically. It is a fact within statistics. And think about this. If a man would have a sexual urge for another man, do you think he would stop there? Absolutely not. He would also go after children, too. So they are predators. Don't let the media tell you, oh, they're just so wonderful, they're so loving, it's just so great to have a queer uncle. You know what? Your queer uncle is 10 to 20 times more likely to molest your child than a regular person. So that tells me that there is a correlation between homosexuality and pedophilia. That it is linked. And that most of them are pedophiles. It goes without saying that these are very serious accusations. I'm going to get to Maddie's sources and their credibility in a bit. But first, I'm going to address what they say so that I'm not accused of poisoning the well. Maddie makes three major claims here. Homosexuality increases the risk of child sexual abuse by a factor of 20. 40% of pedophilia that happens is committed by homosexuals. Homosexual people are statistically proven to be pedophiles. These claims are repeated or expanded slightly later on. Like I said, 40% of pedophilia happens from open homosexuals. That means that homosexuals are pedophiles. In general. And like I said earlier, there is a group of people that are confused. And if we pray for those people, we're talking about the lowest of lows, the craziest of crazies, the LGBT community. And people, Christians, will often get mad at me and say, Brother Powell, you just really crossed the line here. You've really gone over the top. No, you're going, you know where you're crossing the line is when you stand with the LGBT. And you stand with the very group of people that leads the world in pedophilia and AIDS and disease spread. That is what is really degrading America today. I need to pause here and point out an issue that is ubiquitous throughout Maddie's sermon. She repeatedly uses incorrect terminology, and in doing so, demonstrates that she doesn't know what she's talking about. When she's talking about pedophilia, I think a lot of the time she actually means child molestation. Pedophilia is a sexual attraction disorder towards prepubescent children. 
the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, a publication used to diagnose psychiatric conditions, further clarifies the criterion for someone to have pedophilic disorder. They must have intense, recurrent sexual urges regarding prepubescent children for more than six months, have acted on or been caused significant distress by the urges, and be at least 16 years old and five years older than whom they are attracted to. There's also a note to exclude persons in late adolescence involved in ongoing relationships, so someone doesn't magically become a pervert when they turn 16 if they are dating someone five years younger than them. In other words, pedophilic disorder, or being a pedophile, is a disorder characterized by intense, recurrent, distressful sexual attraction to prepubescent children. It may or may not be acted upon. Being a pedophile does not automatically mean someone is a pervert. It does mean having an unhealthy disorder, and it does need addressing with professional help. But ultimately, it is a mental thing. Pedophilia is not an action. Child molestation, however, is the actual abuse of children. Contrary to common parlance, it is not pedophilia. It is an action and a heinous one. One of my sources, A Behavior Analysis of Child Molesters, written for law enforcement with the help of the FBI, is from 1992. It contains these quotes about the terms, which should help cement my points here. Quote, Although the use of the term child molester is commonplace, recent publicity and awareness concerning sexual abuse of children has resulted in the frequent use of the term pedophile. At one time, this term was almost exclusively used by psychologists and psychiatrists. Dr. Groth's categorization defines a child molester as having a sexual attraction toward prepubertal children, pedophilia, or sexual attraction toward pubertal children, hebophilia. The term hebophile, sometimes spelled ephebophilia, is rarely used today, even by mental health professionals. Although sexual attraction to pubescent children by adults has the obvious potential for criminal activity, it does not necessarily constitute a sexual perversion as defined by psychiatry. However, many people, including the media, now routinely refer to those who sexually abuse children as pedophiles. This term is being used more and more by law enforcement personnel. It has even entered their slang usage, with some officers talking about investigating a pedo case or being assigned to a pedo squad, end quote. Quote, what then is the difference between a child molester and a pedophile? For many, the terms have become synonymous. The media frequently make no distinction and use the terms interchangeably. Labeling all child molesters as pedophiles is, however, confusing. There are clear differences between the types of individuals who sexually abuse children, and law enforcement officers handling these cases need to make such distinctions. Many child molesters are, in fact, pedophiles, and many pedophiles are child molesters, but they are not necessarily one and the same. End quote. Keep in mind that this document was published almost exactly 30 years ago, and even then the waters were exceedingly muddied by inappropriate application of these terms. So when Maddie talks about 40% of pedophilia that happens, I assume she actually means 40% of child molestation. Any time for the rest of this video that she refers to pedophilia as an act rather than an attraction, I'm going to assume she's actually referring to the immoral crime that is child molestation. Now, on to the claims. Maddie says that homosexuality increases the risk of child sexual abuse by a factor of 20, Specifically, that homosexual individuals are 20 times more likely to molest a child. This is false. Maddie is attributing homosexuality as a cause of child molestation in a failure of thinking, but confusing correlation and causation. They are not necessarily one and the same, and assuming so without proper evidence is faulty. It is indeed correct that a higher percentage of child sexual abuse acts are same-sex acts, 
This was shown in a study by Freund and Watson, which built upon research showing that, in the general population, sexual attraction to females versus sexual attraction to males occurs at a rate of 20 to 1. Despite this, child sexual abuse occurs at a rate of 2 to 1 against females and males, respectively. Furthermore, the ratio of heterosexual to homosexual pedophiles is approximately 11 to 1, and pedophilia is almost non-existent among women. So we're almost exclusively talking about men when we're talking about pedophiles. Since it's estimated that gay people make up roughly 5% of the population, and gay men an even smaller chunk of that, one would think the percentage of pedophiles they account for should be less than 1 11th. People like Maddie's source, again, I'll get to him soon, have taken these numbers and used them as ammunition in a propaganda war against homosexual people. The reality is that homosexual people do not have a higher likelihood of abusing children. Pure fiction. It's a total fabrication. Freund and Watson themselves point this out twice in their paper, both on the first page and in their closing discussion. Rather, they postulate that, quote, with a homosexual development, the resulting proportion of pedophiles is greater than with a heterosexual development. End quote. Think about it in this very crude and simplified way, with numbers I've made up for demonstrative purposes. You have a chance to be female or male, then you have a chance to be bisexual, homosexual, or straight. In any case, you have a chance to develop pedophilic disorder or not. For some reason, people who develop male and homosexual also have a higher chance to develop pedophilic disorder than other groups like homosexual women or straight men. But that does not mean every homosexual person develops pedophilic disorder, nor that every pedophile is a man, nor that every homosexual man is a pedophile. It's a matter of percentages. That does not mean that gay people who are not pedophiles are any more likely to abuse children. This is something that the researchers explicitly point out in the second to last paragraph of their paper. Quote, This, of course, should not be understood as saying that androphiles may have a greater propensity to offend against children than do gynophiles, a myth refuted in an earlier study. End quote. This earlier study was done by Freund, Watson, and Reinzo. They studied the arousal responses of heterosexual and homosexual men who preferred physically mature partners when they were exposed to erotic images and audio of persons outside of their preferred age or sex. I won't get into the details of their methods, but suffice it to say, it seems nothing immoral was done with regard to children. The study states, Quote, the results of the present study suggest that the erotic attractiveness of male children, or pubescence, for androphiles is not greater than the erotic attractiveness of female children, or pubescence, to gynophiles. Thus, there must be another reason for the finding that the proportion of sex offenders against male children among homosexual men is substantially larger than the proportion of sex offenders against female children among heterosexual men. End quote. Yet another study was done in 1994 of 317 children who were victims of child sexual abuse. It found within high confidence limits that, in 82% of cases, the alleged abuser was, quote, a heterosexual partner of a close relative of the child, end quote, and that, quote, the children in the group studied were unlikely to have been molested by identifiably gay or lesbian people, end quote. Finally, a 2005 report from the American Psychological Association states that, quote, Available evidence reveals that gay men are no more likely than heterosexual men to perpetrate child sexual abuse. There are few published reports relevant to the issue of sexual abuse of children living in the custody of lesbian or gay parents. A recent study did, however, find that none of the lesbian mothers participating in a longitudinal study had abused their children. Fears that children in custody of lesbian or gay parents might be at heightened risk for sexual abuse are without basis in the research literature, end quote. So, no, all three of Maddie's claims here are not true. 
being homosexual does not increase the risk of child sex abuse. Wrong, sir. Wrong. Male-to-male -male child molestation takes place at half the rate of male-to-female child molestation, with only one out of every 11 pedophiles identifying as an androphile, a person attracted to males. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal! Homosexual people are not statistically proven to be pedophiles. Pedophilia is almost non-existent among women, including homosexual women. Being a male and developing a homosexual sexual identity seems to have a higher chance of also developing with pedophilic disorder, but this is not guaranteed. This has been tested, and gay men are not aroused when exposed to those outside of their preferred age range, just as straight men are not. You get nothing! You lose! So, Maddie is either confused, or lying. Or perhaps both. I don't know for sure if she's lying, but I do know that her source for these claims is full of shit. Interlude. The fraudulence and homophobic idiocy of Paul Cameron. The first source Maddie uses is an article from the website RenewAmerica.com. The website describes itself thus. The organization is for all people who consider themselves loyal Americans. It has no philosophy, image, or agenda beyond this one unifying premise. America must return to its founding principles if it is to survive. Renew America is thus nonpartisan and non-denominational. However, on the same page, the website states that, quote, Today, that right is threatened as never before by an out-of-control dictatorial judiciary. End quote and displays the verse Isaiah 40.31. Not a very reputable or trustworthy website from the start. So, back to the article posted there. It's written by Paul Cameron, and it is, simply put, a homophobic propaganda piece targeting gay people to make people hate them. It is a supposed rebuttal to an article defending Catholic priests in the face of sex abuse scandals, and features such vile language as... Calling gay volunteers for a 1973 study, quote, Gay males from homosexual enclaves who volunteered for the study to show how normal and well-adjusted they were, end quote labeling a lengthy section about both gay and straight people, and their sexual histories, admissions by homosexuals. The blatantly false sentence, quote, These findings suggest that Dr. Planty was wrong to decry the traditional belief that, quote, men with homosexual orientations cannot be trusted around male children, and that their sexual impulse control is poor, end quote. My aforementioned research from multiple studies have already shown that this claim is not true. Claiming that the author of the article Cameron is rebutting, quote, fails to address the conclusions of other professionals who have dealt with homosexuality, end quote. Cameron then quotes someone from 1949. That's almost a hundred years ago, if you didn't notice. Who describes gay people as sex perverts and seducers who are, quote, ever seeking for younger victims, end quote. Cameron then follows this up with a quote from the U.S. government from 1950, again, almost 100 years ago, and 14 years before black individuals were given basic respect in this country. This quote once again refers to gay people as sex perverts, who, quote, will frequently attempt to entice normal individuals to engage in perverted practices, end quote. It furthermore concludes by saying, quote, one homosexual can pollute a government office, end quote. It should be immediately clear that this decrepit drogger has an irrational hatred of homosexuals. 
He is severely biased and inflammatory, as well as agenda-driven. His article was posted in 2019. That is almost 30 years after the research I found, which disproves his claims, was made available. Furthermore, he is a former scientist whose own work in the field of sexuality was mentioned in one of the papers I have cited. In fact, the data that female children are sexually abused twice as often as males, one of my data points refuting Maddie, comes from Cameron himself and is cited by Freund et al. Yet he has been the target of some serious accusations and actions from the scientific community, as well as civil rights groups. Paul Cameron has been designated as an anti-gay extremist by the Southern Poverty Law Center. He was expelled from the American Psychological Association in 1983 for failing to comply with an ethics and conduct investigation. He was publicly condemned by the American Sociological Association two years later for having, quote, consistently misinterpreted and misrepresented sociological research on sexuality, homosexuality, and lesbianism, end quote, as well as other actions. The most likely course in That's not good enough! In 1987, two years later, the American Sociological Association again censured him by definitively publishing that, quote, the American Sociological Association officially and publicly states that Paul Cameron is not a sociologist and condemns his consistent misrepresentation of sociological research, end quote. That sounds good. As far as I am aware, his research that I have cited has appeared in peer-reviewed journals, and it is referred to as a source in this peer-reviewed literature. That is why I am comfortable using it. Just because someone has bad motives does not mean all of their research is automatically invalid. Regardless, it is funny that the numbers of Maddie Powlett's own source disproves her, and she relies on a horrifically disreputable source. And I should note that among the 13 sources on Cameron's article, which Maddie is using as the proof of her claims, one is the article Cameron is responding to, written by Thomas Planty. One is another article by Thomas Planty, cited as Planty's guess on the number of gay Catholic clergy. Two sources are quotes. Two sources are from Cameron himself, published in the journal Psychological Reports. While it is peer-reviewed, and I couldn't verify this claim, the Southern Poverty Law Center describes the journal as, quote, a Montana-based vanity publication that bills itself as the scientific manifestation of free speech, and that charges $27.50 a page, end quote. One of the aforementioned psychological reports studies by Cameron is titled, Homosexual Sex as Harmful as Drug Abuse, Prostitution, or Smoking. Another of the sources is from Cameron and his son, and the abstract ends with the absolutely absurd lines, quote, The findings that homosexuals more frequently claimed to have had homosexual teachers and more frequently reported homosexual sex with teachers tend to fit the contagion model of homosexuality, that homosexuality is taught by, or caught by, sexual interaction with homosexual practitioners, end quote. Again, correlation does not equal causation. In addition, one does not catch sexual preferences, nor are they contagions. They are simply preferences, which sometimes change over time. I am, quite frankly, astonished that this study made it through peer review and was published with this conclusion written. That leaves six sources that seem like reputable scientific works. Five of them are cited in the first four paragraphs of Cameron's article, only once each, simply to show statistics regarding the gay community, such as criminality, age of sexual partners, and suicide rates. As one final point here, I'd like to note that in this article, Cameron throws three major accusations at Thomas Planty, whom he's trying to refute. He accuses Planty of being, quote, willing to abandon objectivity, end quote. Says that, quote, by pretending to act as a scientist, he deceives his audience, end quote. 
and says that Planty is, quote, discounting claims by homosexuals themselves and the findings of the John Jay study, end quote. In a breathtaking example of hypocrisy, we've already seen that Cameron is in fact the one doing the first two of these things, but he takes it a step further here. The report mentioned, done by the John Jay College of Criminal Justice, took almost a decade to complete and looked at 60 years of child sexual abuse in the Catholic Church. These were its findings, which Cameron says Planty is discounting in his defense of homosexual priests. Quote, no single cause of sexual abuse of minors by Catholic priests is identified as a result of our research. Social and cultural changes in the 1960s and 1970s manifested in increased levels of deviant behavior in the general society and also among priests of the Catholic Church in the United States. Organizational, psychological, and situational factors contributed to the vulnerability of individual priests in this period of normative change. The Causes and Context Report provides data about the historical time period of the problem, the increase in incidents until the late 1970s, and the sharp decline by 1985. Although no specific institutional cause for the increase in incidents was found, factors specific to the Catholic Church contributed to the decline in the mid-1980s. Analyses of the development and influence of seminary education throughout the historical period is consistent with the continued suppression of abuse behavior in the 21st century. The priests who engaged in abuse of minors were not found, on the basis of their developmental histories or their psychological characteristics, to be statistically distinguishable from other priests who did not have allegations of sexual abuse against minors. End quote. Quote, As generally understood now, Homosexual behavior is the commission of a sexual act with someone of the same sex, in contrast to a heterosexual act, or sexual behavior engaged in by persons of different sexes. What is not well understood is that it is possible for a person to participate in a same-sex act without assuming or recognizing an identity as a homosexual. More than three-quarters of the acts of sexual abuse of youths by Catholic priests as shown in the Nature and Scope study, were same-sex acts, priests abusing male victims. It is therefore possible that, although the victims of priests were most often male, thus defining the acts as homosexual, the priest did not at any time recognize his identity as homosexual. Data on homosexual identity and behavior of priests who have been treated are presented at length in Chapter 3. End quote. Quote, in summary, the clinical files show that the majority of priests who were treated participated in post-ordination sexual behavior. Also, participation in pre-ordination sexual behavior predicted post-ordination sexual behavior, though the post-ordination sexual behavior was more likely to be with adults than minors. The data does not support a finding that homosexual identity and or pre-ordination same-sex sexual behavior are significant risk factors for the sexual abuse of minors. The only significant risk factor related to sexual identity and behavior was a confused sexual identity, and this condition was most commonly found in abusers who were ordained prior to the 1960s." End quote. This report is not the only one to find no connection between homosexuality and child molestation. As early as 1978, a review of previous scientific literature was done and found that, quote, nearly all have shown only a random connection between homosexual behavior and child molestation. Thus, it seems counterproductive to study attacks on children as a variation of homosexuality, end quote. There is also a further annotation in the same study. Quote, Following a detailed discussion of the methodological problems involved in designing a study to test a possible relationship between homosexuality and child molestation, the literature is reviewed and no connection found. End quote. So it is not Thomas Planty who is discounting the report's findings, or the decades of research done on the topics of homosexuality, pedophilia, and the safety of children. It is, in fact, Paul Cameron, Maddie's unreliable and extraordinarily biased source, 
who is also citing himself in his own article, that is denying these things. He is a disingenuous, inflammatory, and severely homophobic bigot with a disturbing agenda of hate that drives him to lie and misrepresent data. Not only is he untrustworthy, but he is also demonstrably wrong, and in the one study of his I am comfortable using as a source, his own numbers disprove Maddie's false claims. So these three claims can be labeled as unequivocally false. Let's pause here. I'll continue dissecting Maddie's claims in a future video, and we'll pick up where I left off. That's all for now. I'm Willow the Wendigo, bidding you farewell. Wherever you are, I hope you have a lovely night's sleep. And remember, you're always welcome in the Deadwood. <laughs>